I know some of you see the title of this video, you're licking your lips, you're rubbing your hands together, you're popping the popcorn. Jeff's here to talk about Randy Orton. And some of you maybe think that's when magic usually happens. Well, we'll see how this goes. I try not to talk about a lot of political things and social things on this channel because it is wrestling related. Sometimes I will reference it in relation to the wrestling business or the WWE to make comparisons, uh, particularly comparisons about how out of touch the WWE is with the current social climate and environment. But I try not to dive into it too much. This is one of these ones where I'm going to, so if some of you are surprised or caught off guard by it, oh well, try to deal with it the best you fucking can is all I can say. Um, I will also say that when it comes to the internet and social media, it can be a wonderful thing. The internet does some great, fantastic things, helping long-lost relatives find each other after 40, 50 years. Uh, dogs go missing and they're found in a few hours. Uh, people are having hard times and the internet and the world rallies around them to help out. I mean, there are wonderful things that happen because of the internet, because of social media. Unfortunately, there's a lot of bad that goes with that, a lot of evil that goes with that, a lot of hate that goes with that, a lot of idiotic things that go with that. That's just the environment that we live in. And when you choose to live in an internet kind of social media driven world, you have to deal with all of that, the good and the bad and the ugly. And the WWE has chosen to uh, live in that space. And as a result, it could be a very dangerous space for the company and most certainly for the talents. And this week, I don't think Randy Orton did himself any favors. Didn't do himself any favors. And I most certainly don't think he did the WWE any favors. Uh, and here's where I'm referencing a series of tweets that he put out over the course of a couple of days earlier on in the week. I'm going to read the tweets, try to give a little background on them, and talk about them a little bit. Here's one. Uh, Dave Zirin from Edge of Sports had tweeted him, If you're sneering that it doesn't take courage to raise your fist during the anthem, then you're one of the reasons why it takes courage. Randy Orton responds, and I can't do it in the Chase Oliver, Randy Orton monotone voice. I just can't, so I'll do the best I can. Sneering. More like shaking my head. Courage. L-O-L right. LOL is for girls, damn it! Stop it! You're grown men, stop LOLing! That's stupid! Anyways, courage. That's what it takes to stand up and fight, not raise a fist. Now, of course, Randy Orton would be incredibly expert in the area of standing up and fighting, and in particular, standing up and fighting and representing his country as a former Marine, right? When I mean stand up and fight, does that mean being disobedient to commanding officers? Or is stand up and fighting referencing going AWOL on two different occasions in the entirety of all of this, leading to him serving 38 days in a military prison and ultimately being dishonorably discharged from the fucking military? Who the fuck of all people is Randy Orton to sit there and talking about standing up and fighting and courage? If the courage is going AWOL, then he had it in great fucking abundance. Give me a fucking break. And talking about, you know, standing up and fight. Raising a fist is a way that people feel that they can take a stand. That they can fight back. Now granted, from somebody like me, my perspective, raising a fist may or may not represent a ton of courage. But it's not ultimately my reality that I have to deal with every single day for a lot of other people in this country in particular you know what the flag represents what the country represents there's a lot of bad there's a lot of bad history there there's still a lot of bad present there and frankly it looks like there's still going to be a lot of bad future there so to sit there and say that somebody doing this or making a stand is not standing up and fighting is absolutely and completely ridiculous. Just because it might not be completely the way that I would approach something does not necessarily mean that it is the wrong way to approach some, but something, especially if that person is dealing with a different reality than you, Randall. Here's another tweet. Let me find it. In reference to the teacher in North Carolina who got sus ultimately suspended for stomping on the American flag, Randy Orton responds and says, Suspends? They should fire his ass. Now, granted, I don't necessarily know if I like the notion of somebody living in a country and stomping on its flag. You know, that, again, there's probably, perhaps, in theory, better ways to handle it. But ultimately, what Randy Orton fundamentally wants that school district to do is fire a school teacher for exercising his constitutional right of free speech. 
So we're going to talk about courage and talking about standing up and fighting. And we're going to allude to all this bullshit patriotism crap and talk about what the flag stands for and represents and the awesomeness of freedom. Here is an American citizen practicing his constitutional First Amendment right of freedom of speech. And you want him to be fired. Newsflash, dumb dick. Free speech is not there to protect popular speech. It is there to protect unpopular speech. So that way, the people's voices aren't being suppressed by an oppressive regime or oppressive government or what have you. On top of that, of all the people to talk is a fucking WWE employee. What Randy Orton's doing here is just another example of matching the WWE's hypocrisy on this. This company, in large part, is a defense mechanism to justify and excuse all the fans booing John Cena for the past decade, talking about, it's great, WWE fans have that freedom of speech, they can do whatever you want, as long as it fits the WWE's narrative. Now, granted, WWE can let in who they want or don't want into their arena, since it is private property that they're on. At the same point, even though a lot of those places are funded by taxpayer dollars, so are they really private entities? Nonetheless, this is the same WWE that when fans dress up as costumes for uh, former legendary wrestlers and the company doesn't like it, they ask them to change or they tell them to leave. If you start chants that the company doesn't like, they will tell you to stop or they will tell you to leave or force you to leave. Same thing with signs. So don't sit there and give me all this sanctimonious BS about free speech when your employer is a huge violator of it on a consistent basis. You want a school district to fire a teacher for exercising his right of free speech. The fuck is wrong with us? Then somebody says to him, you're know, talking about the flag and saying it's literally just a flag. And Randy Orton, of course, because he gets caught up in this fucking fantasy world universe, literally just a flag. Wow. Loss for words. Yeah, I don't understand how a guy could be so patriotic, yet at the same point in time wasn't patriotic enough to come anywhere close to fulfilling his fucking military obligations. I never served in the military because I chose not to, because I did not agree with a lot of the things that the U.S. military represents or engages in especially in the recent trend of the past 15 years, a freaking empire building all over the universe. With that said, if I would ultimately committed coming out of high school, I damn sure, unless I got wounded in freaking combat and unjustified unconstitutional wars, I most certainly would have finished out my tour of duty, my commitment, unless I was back in a pine box out of fucking dead. Punk ass bitch talking all this shit about literally just a flag when he was a fucking AWOL and deserting punk bitch. And literally just a flag? You know, maybe if you're white, when Donald Trump goes around this country talking about make America great again, frankly, if you're a white person, he probably speaks to you in great abundance because you've bought into this bullshit narrative that the country is the greatest country in the world, but it's down and it could be back great again. If you're white, the country's always been fucking great because the deck's always been stacked in your favor. All the rules are to your benefit. Throughout the 240-year history of this godforsaken country. I mean, seriously, it's easy to sit there and say that the flag represents so much more when, one, you didn't even fucking bother to finish your military obligation, and two, you're fucking white. And yes, it comes down to that. Because for a lot of other groups in this country, the flag represents something different. You know, this is a flag that represents a country that was built on the backs of slaves. Slave labor built this country. Let's not even get into asking the Indians or the Native Americans what they might think about the flag. These other countries around the world where we've got an increased industrial military complex presence, let's not ask them what that flag represents. For some people, it is literally just a flag and it doesn't mean any fucking thing. At the end of the day, my point being is that you can attach whatever bullshit or symbolism you want to it, but it's still just a flag at the end of the day. And then we get to the last one, just astounding to me. When somebody says, black people are dying, Randy, Where's your anger for that? He tweets back, Americans are dying. Pigment of skin doesn't matter. American people matter. Oh, my God. 
Just, just, just tag it all lives matter and take your L's and move the fuck out. Now look, fundamentally, in the most idealistic sense, all lives do matter. With that said, it's not white people that are being killed by police at the same levels that young black men and black men in general are. So there's a reason there is a movement called Black Lives Matter. Now with that said, I don't agree with a lot of Black Lives Matter, and I think their approach is very flawed in a lot of ways, similar to Occupy Wall Street. Part of the problem is, is that the protest becomes the story. That the protest and the protesters feed into the sensationalism of the media, therefore helping the media do what it ultimately wants to do, <clears throat> tell a story or a narrative in a certain way, and profit from it. That's what you get with a corporate-owned, state-run media like we have in this country. So now you've got Black Lives Matter protesters going out there and protesting, and in some cases rioting or being violent, not in many cases, but occasional cases, that's what becomes the story. The protesting, the protesters, and what happens during said protesting by the protesters becomes the story. This shit happens time after time, over and over again, going back to the protest in Chicago in fucking 68, going to the LA riots in 92, going to Ferguson, now fucking Charlotte. At the end of the day, what happens? Nothing fucking changes. Because these people get so caught up in the bullshit of how badly they are being fucked over by this system, by this country on a day-in, day-out basis, that they can't see the bigger picture. And that is that they are being used as a fucking pawn and that they will do stupid things and ultimately nothing will happen and nothing will change. That's why when you go back and you listen to the NWA and the shit they were talking about the late 80s, early 90s, it's just as relevant today as it was two and a half decades ago. That's why Boys in the Hood, when Lawrence Fishburne is talking about gentrification, is every bit as relevant today as it was 25 damn years ago. Because we get caught up in making the protest the story instead of it being what it's about. Like even Colin Kaepernick was kind of getting off of message and going off into other things. And that becomes the story, and that's the problem. Now, the media helps perpetuate this a lot. And certain politicians and important figures in this country most certainly don't help those matters. Trump News, Donald Trump. But there are flaws within Black Lives Matter because then it becomes about all these different fucking things and nothing gets changed, nothing happens, similar to Occupy Wall Street. And it still doesn't change the fact for all the black men that are being killed by the police, there are far more black men suffering in this country every day because of inequities in the system, and there are far more black men being killed by other black men. Chicago being a notable example. So you're going to take and put all of your attention on this divisive issue that feeds into the media bullshit. Talking about police violence, when such a small percentage of black men are actually killed by police, when so many more black men are killed in their homes or within one or two miles of their fucking homes and within their damn communities. We put 90% of our efforts here when less than 10% of the black men dying are here. That makes no fucking sense. That's You're getting a diminishing return. And we're missing the bigger picture. But with that said, it doesn't change the fact that not only are black men getting killed by police officers, it's a disproportionate number of black men that are being profiled every day just for being black and killed by police for, if no other reason, because the police have certain certain fears built in prejudices and discriminations and uh, racist tendencies built into them by society and by the police and criminal justice system. These black men are being killed by police, ultimately for being black. Now, when Randy Orton says something like Americans are dying of all colors, in some ways you could say that's true. But it, it's such a whitewash, white privilege statement. It's fucking ridiculous. 
You know, it's like one of the major flaws with Black Lives Matter is, is at the end of the day, there are so many layers of white privilege infrastructure that have been put in place in this country over the past 240 fucking years that sitting there and doing all these protests until you get more white people on board, fair or not, you ain't changing a fucking thing. And that's a fact, Jack. We can talk about Frederick Douglass all fucking day long. But at the end of the day, you had to get the white separatist Abraham Lincoln on board in order to get the slaves freed, in order to get them, in theory, equal constitutional rights. We can talk about Dr. King. We can talk about Malcolm X and the things that they pushed for and they fought for and they ultimately believed in and died for. That's courage. That's courage, not going AWOL. Yet at the same token, if it wasn't for the JFKs, the RFKs, and then the LBJs, civil rights becoming the law of the land may not have been put in place for another 10, 20, 30, 40 fucking years. I mean, Jesus Christ. This whitewashing of white people have problems with the police. Yes, there are problems fundamentally with us being uh, beholden to a militaristic police system and white people do get affected by it but they get affected by it because of the arrogance and lack of accountability and responsibility within the police system they don't get a death sentence for being white a lot of these black men that are being killed by the police are getting a death sentence for being black that's the fundamental difference Yes, white people have problems with police. I know I most certainly have, especially being a dude that's dated black women his entire adult life. I can assure you, sometimes it ain't been pretty. With that said, I'm still alive. I've never had an officer tase me. I've had him give me problems. I've had him harass me. I've had him threaten to arrest me. But I promise you, if I got out of my fucking vehicle and walked with my hands up, they ain't shoot my ass. Because of this, I don't have a death sentence. A lot of black men in this country do. And for Randy Orton to sit there and say that all lives matter is just so, so out of touch. Fundamentally in an ideal world, yes, it should be that way. I agree. And I wish it was. But it just isn't totally the case. Now, granted, ultimately, all of this ends up being a circle jerk of fucking futility because nothing is going to change and nothing is going to happen. And that's not defeatist logic. It's seeing the bigger picture and knowing the fucking road that we're going down and understanding where we are, where we're going, and knowing that it's missing the mark and it's missing the bigger picture. There are other things that affect the black community even more than black men getting killed by the police on a consistent day-in, day-out basis. The inequity in funding and education systems and health care available to black families. Wage equality. Um, safety in neighborhoods. I mean, it could go on and on and on. And this whole thing about the police care and the police this. If the police cared, then in so, some of these so-called alleged urban neighborhoods that have a higher rate of crime... Why are these fucking police not patrolling them on a more consistent basis and only showing up after shit has already fucking happened? The only time they have a presence is when the shit hits the fan. Maybe if they had more of a presence there and acted like a more integral part of the community and acted like they actually cared about the fucking community, I'm talking about the system as a whole, maybe some of these problems would go away. We wouldn't have 500 plus fucking murders in Chicago already this year. But instead, you treat it like a goddamn war zone, and the only time you go in is when the bombs fucking drop. But at the end of the day, to tie this back into Randy Orton, it's just ridiculous on so many different levels. This dude has no clue and no fucking idea. You want to talk? And you want to make a statement, Randy Orton? How about you make a statement by after over 15 fucking years in the wrestling business learning how to cut a goddamn promo? You want to trash people for protesting during the National Anthem. You want to knock them for that. You want to sit there and shit on people for stomping on the National Flag. 
Maybe you should learn a little bit about the history of this country, what that flag to a lot of people really represents, and maybe at the same token, take a little time to learn about Francis Scott Key, you know, white separatist slaveholder who wrote the Star Spangled Banner. Maybe actually research the third verse where it's basically implying a celebration of the American forces triumphing over some of the slave uh, soldiers for the British. It's there. Maybe learning a little bit about that history, you could come from a more educated viewpoint, see a bigger picture, and understand why so many people are so goddamn pissed off about things and tired of it and saying enough is enough and it's time for a change. Only in a video talking about race relations in this country could I be quoting Owen Hart. You want to minimize black protesters by knocking people and saying that raising a fist is not showing courage, that's not standing up and fighting. You want to talk about how all lives matter. Do yourself a couple of favors, Randall. Number one, stop watching Fox News! You want to live in this alt-right bullshit universe, then go ahead. But if you want to be somebody who's in a position where some people actually care with your 4-plus million Twitter followers, the 2-plus million people who watch SmackDown every week, the show that you happen to be on, and you want to stand for something positive and help evoke, you know, elicit some of this change that is necessary that ultimately is only going to come because of white people like yourself in positions of power help make it so, then maybe try to actually understand the perspective that black men and women in this country are looking at the flag and the country as a whole with. Try to understand what they deal with, what they encounter, what their reality is. You know, Randall, you might go around walking around the mean streets of St. Louis with baby oil rubbed all over your body, but people aren't looking at you funny because of that. If anything, it's probably because of the raging ring boner. But try being a black man in particular in this country and having people look at you funny and trying to avoid you, especially at night and you're walking all alone on the same side of the street. Try looking at it from that perspective and understanding what black men and women, and especially black men, have to deal with in this country on a day-in, day-out basis. Maybe if you were in a situation where your life was at risk every time you were potentially pulled over by the police just because of the color of your skin, your perspective would be entirely different. And when you want to say that all lives matter, let's even break this down from a WWE standpoint. Look at the employer that you've ripped off for millions over the years with your non-money-drawn ass. Look at how they've treated non-white performers, in particular black and Asian wrestlers over the years. Not a good history! That's why so many people laugh every time they try to celebrate Black History Month every fucking February. Why? Because it's a clown show because we know the WWE on that issue is nothing but a bunch of fucking clowns. Let's sit there and talk about All Lives Matter when the company doesn't treat its employees equally and you know they don't. And it's very easy to talk about All Lives Matter and live in this Fox News alternate reality bullshit bubble when you're a third generation golden boy with the silver spoon up his fucking ass that the WWE has pounded and forced down people's throats for over a fucking decade. The fuck would you know and frankly why the fuck would you care? And it's that simple. I'm talking about courage when you tucked your tail and went AWOL multiple times. Stop talking about the glories of free speech and then shitting on people when they exercise said constitutional right of free speech. Stop talking about all lives matter when you're able to drive around in your fancy car and live in your nice house and not have anybody look at you funny because you're not black. Try to learn a little bit about the history of this country, Randall. Try to understand the plight that still to this day many non-white people have to deal with in this country. It's a reality. It's a fact. And don't give me that bullshit of white guilt that comes in that says, oh, this country's got some work to do still, but by God, it's a lot better. Again, as the example I use, this country used to get a big fat zero. Now maybe we're a 40 or a 50%. We're still fucking failing. Progress, my ass, who cares? If we care about the results, the performance, the production, we're still fucking failing. And to sit there and do all this bullshit, patriotic, soldier crap, 
You know, there were a lot of black men that did die for this country. That's true. And you could maybe view it as protesting the flag and the anthem as a disrespect towards them. But again, the anthem was written by a slave-owning white separatist. Check out verse 3 of the Star Spangled Banner if you want some more insights into that jerkwad. On top of that, you want to talk about real courage, Randall? Real courage is fighting for a country that doesn't love you. Real courage is fighting for a country that doesn't believe in you. Real country courage is fighting for a country that demonizes you and patronizes you and disenfranchises you every step of the way. All those soldiers that fought, black soldiers in the Revolutionary War, the War of 1812, the Civil War, World War I, World War II, and most especially because they didn't get the same deferments from the draft that a lot of white families did in Vietnam, the Vietnam War. At the end of the day, they fought for a country that didn't love them, that they loved more than the country loved them, and came back and had to deal with Jim Crow segregation and flat-out racism and denying of their rights to vote and other things. And here's this asshat going AWOL multiple times trying to tell anybody anything about fucking courage. That's courage. And you see a lot of black soldiers now. You know, he's talking about veterans with Kaepernick and so on. There's a reason. Because they understood that even if they're fighting over there, oppressing other colored people's mind you, that they come back, they're still black, and they still have to deal with the realities of being a black man in America. So the next time you want to be some great social crusader, Randall, the next time you want to sit there and take a stand and come across as out of touch as you freaking are, please either A... Take the time to educate yourself on some of these matters, or B, just shut the hell up.